In this video, I'm going to walk through how step-by-step -step to get up and running with XMU so you can emulate your favorite Xbox games on your Mac. But I have to warn you, it's a bit complex as it requires some terminal work. So if you're looking for a hassle-free way to play retro video games on your Mac, I'd really suggest checking out my PlayStation 2 emulation guide. Otherwise, Let's get into getting up and running and playing your Xbox collection on your Mac. The video description is going to have a lot of important information, so please check that out. Getting XMU up and running is more technical than many emulators because it requires a bit of terminal work, and that is for converting the games into an ISO format that XMU can launch. It doesn't matter if you rip your own games or sail the high seas and download them less than legally from the internet. This is a process that you're going to have to do. The very first requirement we're going to need is Homebrew. Homebrew is a package manager for Mac OS. Think of it as an open source app store for command line utilities. Installing Homebrew is pretty easy. Just go to brew.sh, open up a terminal window in Mac OS, click the little clipboard icon next to the line of text here, which will copy it, and now we can paste it into our terminal and then hit return. You will likely need to enter in your computer's password to do this. I already have Homebrew installed, so let's move ahead. Once that's done, we're going to install the Xcode command line utilities. This is done by running the following command. Xcode dash select space dash dash install. Since I already have this installed on my MacBook Pro, I moved to my MacBook 12 inch to demonstrate how it brings up a install window. This is by far the easiest way to install our next dependency, which is Git. Git is a version control system that's widely used in software development. Now we can start doing stuff. The first thing we're going to do is download XMU from the XMU website. It is a universal binary, so it'll work on Intel Macs and Apple Silicon. Once it's downloaded and decompressed, we want to just drag that into our Applications folder, folder in all, and you'll see why in a second. If you try and double-click this application, it'll probably give you an unidentified developer error message. You will want to right-click and then click Open to bypass this. When we first boot this emulator, we'll get an error message, and that's because we have not set it up yet. This will require three files, the BIOS, the boot ROM, and the pre-built Xbox HDD image. These are copyrighted files, so please don't ask me where to download them. Commonly, these files can be found at places like archive.org. Since I have these files, I'm going to drag them into the XMU folder. From the drop-down menu, I'm going to select Machine, and then go down to System. This should be pretty self-explanatory, but let's just run through this very quickly. The MCPX boot ROM should be a file that has MCPX in it and a .bin format. The Flash ROM BIOS is also distributed as a bin, but this one has the words complex in it. And finally, we have the hard drive image, which usually has the words HDD in it, but it's always in a .qcow2 file format. Quit and relaunch the emulator and you now should see the Xbox boot sequence. Now at this point, you would think you would be able to launch a game by locating the ISO file and then selecting the game you want to load. You can try, but it probably won't work because unless the ISO has been treated for XMU, it won't boot. So to fix this, we're gonna to have to process these ISO files. And we're gonna do that by using a command line utility called Extract XISO. But unfortunately, this is not straightforward as we have to compile this utility. Let's open up a terminal window and run the commands brew space update. This will make sure that brew is up to date. The next thing we're going to do is brew install CMake. CMake is, oh God, it's basically it's a build system that isn't. You're not going to see the full install process because I already have this installed on this computer, but it might take a bit. The next step, I'm going to make a folder inside my user directory. Just for my own sanity, I'm going to use the ls command to list the contents of this directory. Since I'm already using the terminal, I'm going to create this folder using the mkdir command. Now if I run the ls command again, I can see my Xbox directory that I've just made. Now it's time from our terminal to navigate into this directory. We're going to do this by using cd, aka change directory, 
then followed by Xbox, which is the name of my directory or folder. Just for sanity's sake, I'm going to clear out my terminal and let's get moving forward. Now we're going to use git to clone the source code for extract xiso. Then I'm going to paste in the URL for the source code, which I have linked in the description of this video and in the written guide. This will take a second, but it will download the source code into this directory. Running the ls command, we can see extract xiso is there. We're going to navigate into this directory, again using cd, change directory, extract dash xiso. Now we're going to make another directory using the mkdir, and then we're going to name it build. Then we're going to change directory inside build using cd build, and from there, we're going to run cmake space period period. Once that's finished, we're running one last command, and that is make. Once that's finished, pat yourself on the back because you have just downloaded an open source program and compiled it on your own. Now we can finally use our newly compiled utility to process games. I'm going to demonstrate using this application two separate ways. The first way is going to be a two-step process, meaning two separate terminal commands. And the second way requires one. The first way is slightly more reliable. I'm still in the build directory where this application is located. So I'm going to type period forward slash extract dash xiso space dash x. And be sure to leave a trailing space. And from here, I need to locate my ISO. The easiest way to do this is to find it in your finder and then just drag it onto the window. The X command will extract the ISO. Now, if we go to our build folder in the finder, we'll see that I've extracted my game. The next step is to repack the game. So we're going to type in again, period slash extract dash X ISO space dash C space. And then we're going to drag in this folder, run the command and it'll create an ISO. So let's try this out in XMU. Fire up XMU and go to load disk and then locate the ISO you just made. Now we're going to see one of the quirks of XMU. Nothing will happen and that's normal. Under machine, then go to reset. The game now should boot. I'm going to skip ahead and this is a good game to demonstrate some of the render issues that you can find in XMU as this is still being actively developed and its compatibility keeps improving every day. This is not surprising or unexpected because I took the time to research this before running this game. Let's take a look at what I mean. Just go to the website and click the compatibility. And from here, you can check on the current status of any single game and its known issues. And as you can see, there's quite a few issues with Halo 2, but that's expected. Halo 2 has a flickering problem on Apple Silicon. All right, back to the game. If you're using a USB controller, XMU is almost near magic. I'll just plug in my PS4 controller and it'll automatically map everything. That's it. Now I can start playing the game. Under debug, I'm going to bring up video debug just to see the performance I'm getting. My M1 Max seems to be doing fine. From the view, we can adjust the graphics options. I'm going to change the internal resolution to 2x and it looks like it's going to go fine. And then finally to 4x and it doesn't seem to have a noticeable performance hit. You can do things like force widescreen, but you're just going to smush the graphics in many of the games. Now let's do the easier method of extract dash XISO. I'm still in the build directory where the application lives. So I'm going to just continue running it as dot forward slash extract dash XISO space dash R. Just like before, I'm going to leave a trailing space and also drag from the finder into the terminal window, the ISO I want to process. Once it's done, it'll create a new .iso file. Let's fire up XMU and load the game and then reset XMU. As a side note, repacking games for XMU often reduces the ISO size. With this game, let's go over a few more advanced things you can do with this. Go to machine and under input, we are going to want to enable background controller input capture. This particular feature requires rebooting the emulator to enable it, but it's very important because it means even if you click off the window for XMU, you can continue controlling the game with your video game controller. For our final trick, we're going to use snapshots, which are the same as free states and other emulators. If you get to a point in a game where you'd like to save, just go to snapshots and then click the create button. Let's pretend I made a bad move and my units are currently dying. I can go to snapshots and load the snapshot I just took. 
and the game has now reverted back to the exact moment when I took that snapshot. This emulator's been actively developed, so you'll want to check back time to time to see if there's any updates. It also supports some advanced features like networking, and there's documentation out there on how to try and set that up. This means you could potentially play Xbox games over LAN. If you would like to use an Xbox or Xbox 360 controller with your Mac, as noted in the XMU documentation, you will need to install 360 controller. Since this is such a complicated process, I really, really recommend checking out my written guide because it has all those fancy terminal commands written out so you can copy and paste them instead of having to squint and try and type along to this YouTube video. Also, you can check me out on Patreon. There's stuff for non-members there too, like desktop backgrounds and video stuff, so check that out. And lastly, as much as I'd love to be able to provide technical support to everybody, this is so complicated that you're kind of on your own. However, if you need to troubleshoot it, I really, really recommend using Google and also ChatGPT. ChatGPT can guide you through terminal commands. If you come across something you don't understand, you can ask it to explain it or even plug in debug messages and it will try and explain it back to you. It's not 100% perfect, but it's much better as a co-pilot than not having anyone at all.